Hello my dear students, welcome to today's lesson. So I'm going to continue with the lesson. In the previous chapter, we discussed some properties like how metal substances conduct heat, conduct electricity, whether they make a sonorous sound, whether they have a lustrous nature that is the shine. Then we discussed whether they can, con they can be malleable, that is they can be hammered into sheets without uh, breaking into pieces or whether they are ductile, whether they can be drawn into wires or they are brittle. That is if you drop it, whether they break into pieces, whether you are able to crush it into tinier pieces. So those are some properties. In addition to that, we even discuss melting point, boiling point. We discuss activities to understand what those are, then density and you were able to understand that density, melting point and boiling point those are fixed values for pure substances. So that was in the previous chapter. Then using those properties after observing them and we discuss some activities, very simple activities that we can use to identify all these properties. We already filled this table in the previous chapter as well. But I'm going to do it again so that you can remember and recall all the properties that we discussed previously. So here we have this table in your textbook. There they have given the substance. You can see here on this column, the first column, iron, copper, sulfur, graphite, magnesium, aluminium, lead and zinc. Then there are the properties. Last year, can you remember, we said that is the shiny nature, lustrous shine. Then sonority, the ringing sound when you hit it on an object or when you drop it down, the ringing sound that you hear. Thermal conductivity, ability to conduct heat. When you hold it to a flame, the heat is conducted through that substance. Then electrical conductivity, we connected a circuit and with that we place that particular substance, matter, and if the bulb lights, we say that electricity is conducted by that particular element. Otherwise, we say it does not conduct electricity. Then malleability, like I said, the ability to be hammered into sheets without breaking into pieces. And brittleness is the nature of the substance to be crushed into pieces or powder. So if we can identify the properties related to each of these elements, like it is done for the first element that is iron. You can see it as luster, sonority, thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, malleability, but no brittleness. The same way, if we consider copper, that shows luster, sonority, it can conduct heat well, it can conduct electricity well, it is malleable, but it does not have brittleness. It cannot be crushed into pieces. Then sulfur. Sulfur does not have a luster. It doesn't make a sonorous sound. It does not conduct heat, does not conduct electricity. It is not malleable, but it is brittle. I'm sure you can remember that. Graphite. Graphite again, there is no luster doesn't make a sonorous sound, it doesn't conduct heat, but you can remember student, it can conduct electricity well. Even in dry cells, there is graphite. So that is, it conducts electricity. Then, if we look at the other properties, it is not malleable. You cannot have, you cannot hammer it into piece, sheets. If you drop your pencil, the lead of the pencil breaks easily. So by applying a force, you can't hammer it into sheets. Therefore, it is brittle. Then, we have magnesium. Magnesium again has luster. It makes sonorous sound. It can conduct heat. It can conduct electricity. It is malleable. That is why we have magnesium tapes in the lab. It is not brittle. If you drop it, it won't get crushed into pieces. Even if you hammer it, it will become sheets but not pieces. So you cannot crush it. Then aluminium. Again, it has the lustrous shine. You all know copper, 
then magnesium aluminium they all have the shine now magnesium in the lab when you take it it might be covered with an oxide layer but when you scrape it with a sandpaper that is the activity we are supposed to do then you will see the shine even aluminium sometimes it might look tarnish but it does have the shine then it does make the sonorous sound it conducts heat that is why we use aluminium utensils at home then it conducts electricity it is malleable can be made into sheets and it is not brittle it will not break into pieces it will not be crushed into pieces easily then lead lead does have luster but the important thing is lead does not have the sonorous sound now there are a few exceptions that is why i am doing a using a different color so lead like i told you all before students it does not make sonorous sound the rest of the properties are similar to iron copper magnesium aluminium but it does not make a sonorous sound it conducts heat thermal conductivity yes it conducts electricity so electrical conductivity it is malleable it is not brittle those are the properties then zinc it does have a shine luster it does make the sonorous sound it conducts heat thermal conductivity it conducts electricity electrical conductivity it is malleable can be made into sheets and also it is not brittle it is not brittle so those are the properties that you can understand for all these elements now from these students from these properties if you look at these elements now here most of these properties starting from luster up to malleability these properties are usually shown by elements that are known as metals or in other words if an element has all these properties or most of these properties we classify it as a metal so luster sonority thermal conductivity electrical conductivity and malleability are characteristics or physical properties of metals whereas brittleness is for non metals brittleness is for non metals so from this if you look at all these elements again can you see now iron is a metal i will use the letter m with a circle just to denote it is a metal now see it has all these properties no brittleness so this is a metal now copper you can see luster sonority thermal conductivity electrical conductivity malleability no brittleness so that is also a metal if it is a non metal i will leave it as a space sulfur none of these properties are there so it is not a metal but it shows brittleness it is a non metal so i will just leave it as it is then graphite again no luster no sonorous sound does not conduct heat but this is an exception graphite although it is a non metal it conducts electricity it does not have malleability but it is brittle so that is also a non metal then here magnesium again magnesium luster sonority thermal conductivity electrical conductivity malleability but it is not brittle so then again this is a metal aluminium say all the properties of metals are there in aluminium it doesn't have the property brittleness it doesn't break into pieces easily so it is a, it is a metal you can confirm it is a metal then lead it has luster it doesn't have the sonorous sound i said most of the property all the metals need not have all the properties exactly so it doesn't have sonority but it, it can conduct heat thermal conductivity can conduct electricity electrical conductivity and it is malleable so again that is a metal 
and zinc all the properties of metals luster sonority thermal conductivity electrical conductivity and malleability so that is also a metal so out of all these elements iron copper magnesium aluminium lead and zinc they are all metals only sulfur and graphite these two are non metals these two sulfur and graphite are non metals so from all these physical properties their characteristics we can classify or group elements into metals and non metals that is what you have to understand here based on the results of the above experiment and other characteristics not only these there are many more characteristics we discuss some of them density melting point boiling point even density is somewhat high for metals melting points are somewhat high for metals whereas for non metals density as well as melting and boiling points are somewhat low i'm saying somewhat it's not always there are exceptions so you have to remember that elements can be divided into two classes that is metals and non metals you have to remember that they can be divided into two classes so we have done that here i'm sure you all can understand that clearly so then so then i'm going to move on to the next slide the diversity of the physical properties of metals and non metals so as we discussed so far we saw some of the properties are there in metals they are seen in metals or elements that possess those properties are considered metals and some other properties are for non metals so if we take the first class that is metals you can look at all these properties if i start from here good conductors of heat that we know saw no students now iron copper aluminium zinc all of them conduct heat very well that is why at households in the household you have different utensils that are used for cooking normally made up of iron it can be aluminium earlier days they even used copper so like that those are all metals they are very good conductors of heat then they are good conductors of electricity this is one property this is another property they are good conductors of electricity you all know at home there is the copper wire that is used to conduct electricity the wiring in your household then there are aluminium wires so copper and aluminium are metals they are very good conductors of electricity then we have the lustrous nature last now here if we write good conductors of heat you all know examples iron aluminium copper again good conductors of electricity copper aluminium then lustrous nature in day to day life we use it the jewelry you wear gold silver they have a very nice shine the luster that is why we use them as or we use them to make jewelry because they have that shine they don't tarnish they don't become dull so they are very bright and shiny so lustrous nature is again a property of metals sonorous sound the bells that we use now that it can be the hand bell it can be the thal that you use for music so it's a musical instrument the cymbals they are made up of metals so like that even xylophone has metal rods so metal plates you can get the ringing sound sonorous sound so all those are seen in metals different metals usually it is iron is used to make the bells sometimes you have copper so that is seen in metals but there are again you saw an exception lead does not make sonorous sound so although lead is a metal it does not make sonorous sound then it can be hammered into sheets malleability at home you use aluminium foil to wrap food 
that is aluminium sheets, very thin sheets, very flexible. Then you have seen sheets made up of iron. So aluminium, iron, all these are made into sheets. Even the vessels, cooking vessels, you can make it into different shape because they can be hammered into sheets. So that is again another property, malleability of metals. They can be drawn into wires. So like I told you all, copper wire, aluminium wire, like that to lift heavy weights, we use iron wires, iron or steel. Steel is again made from iron. It is an alloy of iron. You would have heard about it. Steel wires. So those are possible because they can be drawn into wires, ductility. That is also another property of metals. So good conductors of heat, good conductors of electricity, lustrous nature, sonorous sound, making a sonorous sound. They can be hammered into sheets that is malleability and they are drawn into wires, ductility. All these are properties of metals. Another exception. Now graphite is a non-metal. It doesn't show most of these properties but it conducts electricity. So there can be exceptions to that. You have to keep that in mind. Is that clear to you? So now that you know the characteristics of metals, next we will look at the characteristics of non-metals. Non-metals. They are poor conductors of heat. Now if you hold your pencil, the lead of the pencil that is graphite, to a flame, you won't feel the heat on the other side because it is a poor conductor of heat. So carbon, graphite, they normally don't conduct heat. Now poor conductors, this is one property. Then another one, poor conductors of electricity, but the important thing is except carbon, that is also graphite. There are different forms of carbon. You will be discussing that in your higher grades. But you have to remember graphite is a form of carbon. Graphite is seen in pencil leads, in dry cells. Dry cells are batteries. They are used to produce electricity. So these graphite rods are very good conductors of electricity. So except carbon, the other non-metals like sulfur and there are many more non-metals. We will be discussing some more. Iodine, bromine, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, all these are non-metals. So they are poor conductors of electricity. Poor conductors of heat, poor conductors of electricity and not lustrous. Just a shiny nature is somewhat different from the lustrous shine. Now if you take an aluminium foil and pencil lead, you can understand the difference clearly. Now aluminium foil has that nice shine that is what we call as the lustrous shine or lustrous nature, luster. That is not there in graphite, sulfur, carbon, all these other non-metals. So that is not lustrous. Non-metals are not lustrous. And finally, they cannot be hammered into sheets. They cannot be drawn into wires. But if you crush them or if you apply force onto them, they break into tiny pieces. So breaks into pieces when struck. That is the brittle nature. This you have seen. Now when you have pencil at home, you use pencil every day. When you drop it down, in immediately the tip of the pencil breaks, the lead breaks. That's because carbon is brittle. Immediately it can break. Again, there are exceptions, students. But normally, it is very brittle. Now, sulfur can be easily crushed into powder. Same way, carbon also can be crushed into powder. So like that, if it is a solid metal, it can be easily crushed into powder or broken into pieces. So these are the properties of non-metals. Poor conductors of heat, poor conductors of electricity, not lustrous and also they break into pieces very quickly. 
that is brittle they are not malleable they are not ductile they don't make a sonorous sound so those are all properties of non metals i'm sure you all can understand that easily so properties of metals properties of non metals so you have an element you look at it you observe different properties and based on those properties you can classify them or divide them into classes as metals and non metals i'm sure you all can understand that clearly so with that students we will move on to the next slide so based on their physical properties elements can be classified as metals and non metals that is what we did before also moreover based on the physical state of matter they can be classified as solid liquid and gas so we classified them as metals and non metals then based on physical state we can classify them as solid liquid and gases so you can have metals that are solids most of the metals are solids there is an exception mercury is a metal that is a liquid at the same time we have metal non metals that are solids non metals that are liquids non metals that are they are in the form of gases so those are the physical state and you all know why they exist in three different physical states based on the particulate nature how the particles of that matter are arranged if they are closely packed if there are strong interaction between them they are solids with definite volume definite shape then if they are, they are loosely arranged if they can move around freely they have a definite volume but they can take up the shape of the container they occupy then they are liquids whereas gases they are very random particles they move around freely no interaction at all between the constituent particles because of that they don't have a definite shape they don't have a definite volume but they are more easily compressible so those are the three states solids liquids and gases so you have matter the pure substances under that you have the elements elements are divided into metals and non metals based on their characteristics in addition to that based on their physical state they can be solids liquids or gases so now we have a table here we have the elements in the first column metallic and non metallic nature or metallic or non metallic nature in the second column then physical state solid liquid and gas in the last column you should know all these elements whether they are metals or non metals and also physical state so when we say physical state students the state at which they are normally found in nature at room temperature the normal temperature if you have them as solids that is their physical state if you have them as liquid that is their physical state if you have them as a gas that is their physical state that's how we are going to fill this table this is again given in your textbook so sodium now sodium is a metal so it will show all those metallic properties luster shine thermal conductivity electrical conductivity all those are shown by sodium it is a metal and the physical state is solid it is a solid at room temperature so that is the first element sodium then we have aluminium aluminium is also a metal and it is again a solid at room temperature so you have seen that at home aluminium solid metal then calcium calcium is also a metal and again that is also a solid at room temperature the third element so sodium aluminium calcium all of them are metals and they are solids then we have iron again you have seen that it is a very good conductor of heat electricity lustrous in nature sonorous sound ductile malleable all those are there so it is a metal and the physical state is solid 
then again. We have the next element, copper. Again, you all know, it has a shine, conducts electricity, heat, malleable, ductile, it is a metal. And you find copper as a solid at room temperature, solid. That is the next element. Then we have magnesium. Magnesium in the lab, we have it as magnesium strips. So it is a solid. If you clean it with the sandpaper, it shows the shine, luster. Then it conducts heat, it conducts electricity, ductile, malleable. So that is also a metal. And it is a solid at room temperature. Then we have zinc. Zinc again is a metal because it shows all the properties of metal. Metal and also it is a solid at room temperature. Zinc, metal, it is a solid. Then lead, although it doesn't show the, it doesn't have the sonorous property, doesn't make a ringing sound, it has other properties of metal. So it is a metal and me lead again you can have it as pieces or tiny particles but it is a solid at room temperature, solid. Then we have mercury. Now mercury again is a metal. Where have you all seen mercury? In thermometers, clinical thermometers, not the digital one, the normal manual one, you have seen mercury. It is a liquid, but it has the luster, it has the shine, it conducts heat, it conducts electricity. Therefore, it is a metal. Not only that, there are many other properties that make mercury a metal. But the difference is the physical state is liquid. So, mercury is a metal, you have to remember students, a metal that exists as a liquid at room temperature or it has the physical state as liquid is mercury. So that is why I am using a different color. Now here all these, all are metals, sodium, aluminium, calcium, iron, copper, magnesium, zinc, lead, mercury, all of them are metals. And Except mercury, all of them are solids. So you can remember mercury is the metal that exists as liquid at room temperature. Is that okay, student? But we have to continue with this table. You have to remember all these properties. So with that, I'm going to move on to the next slide where I will continue with the table. So here again we have the element metallic or non-metallic nature and physical state solid liquid gas. So the first one, first one is carbon. Now carbon we said it is not lustrous, it doesn't form a, make a sonorous sound, not ductile, not malleable, doesn't conduct heat but it conducts electricity and it is brittle. So, although it conducts electricity, you have to remember carbon is a non-metal. So, here it is a non-metal. Now, non-metal students, you can put a hyphen and write or like this, you can write with a space in between or you can write it as one word, but usually with a hyphen or a space. And carbon exists as a solid at room temperature solid physical state. Then we have silicon. Silicon is also a non-metal and it is a solid. Silicon, non-metal and it is a solid. Then the next element, we have phosphorus. Again another element that is a non-metal and that is a solid at room temperature non-metal and solid at room temperature. Then we have sulfur. Now sulfur is also a non-metal 
and it is also a solid, a yellowish color solid. You have seen that in the lab. Then we have iodine. Iodine, you can buy iodine as crystals from the pharmacy. So that is also a non-metal and it is a solid. Iodine is a solid and it is a non-metal. Then we have hydrogen. Hydrogen, you would have heard about hydrogen gas balloons. So it is a gas, physical state is a gas and it is a non-metal. So hydrogen is a non-metal. But these are gases. So here all these were solids. I will write it as a gas here. I am using different colors just so that you can immediately get information from this. But even if you fill it with the same color, that's fine. Then we have some more elements. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is also a non-metal. Non-metal. And that again is a gas. So before I change colors, I will write this. Oxygen is a non-metal. Chlorine is a non-metal. Argon is a non-metal. And bromine is also non-metal. So all these are non-metals. Because of the color, I am going to write it together. Non-metal. And this is also a non-metal. So then these are all non-metals. But if you take these elements, now hydrogen is a gas. Nitrogen, you all know in atmosphere, nitrogen is one of the main gases. It is there in 78% in atmosphere. So that is something you know generally also. So that again is a gas. How about oxygen? The gas that we breathe, it's there in the atmosphere. That is also a gas. Then we have chlorine. You would have heard chlorine. Chlorine is used to clean pools, chlorinated water. So to disinfect water, chlorine is a gas. It is a non-metal and it is a gas. Chlorine is a gas. Then argon. Argon is sometimes filled into bulbs. Argon is a non-metal. It is a gas. Argon is a gas. Then we have this last one. Bromine. Bromine is a non-metal but bromine is a liquid. So bromine is a liquid. Now can you all see? Now if I go back to the previous one also, here we saw all these are metals. Sodium, aluminium, calcium, iron, copper, magnesium, zinc, lead, mercury, all of them are metals. And their physical states are solids except for mercury. Mercury is the metal that exists as a liquid in normal state. Can you all understand that? Then if we go to the next one, all these elements, carbon, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, iodine, hydrogen, nitrogen, then there is oxygen, chlorine, argon and bromine, all of them are non-metals. What do you see here? These non-metals, that is carbon, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur and iodine, all of them are solids. But here you can see hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine and argon, they are non-metals, they are gases. And here again, bromine is a liquid. So can you all understand that? Metals are usually solids except for mercury. But non-metals can be gases, liquids or solids. That those are again 
properties of both metals and non-metals. You all have to keep that in mind, students. So you should know all these elements, whether they are metals or non-metals, and their physical state, solid, liquid or gas. I'm sure you can understand that. With that, I will move on to the next slide. Day-to-day -day applications of various physical properties of matter. So there are so many physical properties that we have discussed. No? Even with the table, before that when we divided it, them into two classes, metals and non-metals, I told you all with the examples. Now one example, can you think? Now copper is a solid and it can be drawn into wires, it's ductile and it is a very good conductor of electricity, electrical conductivity. So because of that, we can use them as electricity conducting cables or wires. So based on their properties, their characteristics, we have them useful to us. We use them in our daily life. That is what we are discussing here. Day-to-day -day applications of various physical properties of matter. The physical properties of matter can be usefully applied in various ways in our everyday life. So as examples, we will discuss a few. Now one thing I said, copper. So copper is one thing, ductile. So that means it can be drawn into wires. It is a solid metal and it has electrical conductivity. Conductivity. So, because of that, it is used as used as electricity cables and wires. That is one thing you can consider. One example copper. Then what else can you think of? Any other substance? Any other material? We can consider iron. Now iron the next one, iron. Iron, how do we use it? It is very hard, it is ductile, it is malleable, it makes a sonorous sound. So because of all that it is a very good conductor of heat, thermal conductivity. So we use that in many of our day-to-day -day lives. Because it's a good conductor of heat, we use it to make cooking utensils spoons and all those. Then we make it, use it to make many frames because it's very hard and it can withstand for a long time. Then it is used as cable, wires to lift heavy weight and all that because it is ductile and also it can lift heavy weight. So like that, there are many properties that help us to use iron in our day-to-day -day life. So properties, again I can say ductile, ductile, malleable, thermal conductivity, conductivity, then electrical conductivity, TBT, then there is the sonorous sound, sonorous nature. So because of all this, we can use it. It is used to make cooking utensils. cooking utensils, then cables, then large 
structures like ships, bridges, then we have like cables, like this we can keep on writing or giving so many examples for iron. So all those are possible because of their properties. So you should know to relate this. We will discuss two more examples and then I will move on to the next part. So again if we take another substance, let's say mercury. Mercury. Now mercury is a metal, it can conduct heat easily. It is shiny but it is a liquid. So what is its application? Used in thermometers. So a liquid metal, metal, thermal conductivity, conductivity, Vt and also it can expand due to heat that is why we are able to use it in thermometers. So there that is another property expands due to heat. So because of that it is used in, in thermometers. used in thermometers. We can call it as heat expansivity or thermal expansivity. Expands due to heat. That's why when you check the temperature, if the temperature is high, the thermometer column inside, it increases, you get the temperature reading there. So that is all possible because of these features. Although it is a metal, it is a liquid. So that's very, very useful. Then one more you can think. Let's say we will take carbon, carbon and here if we take graphite, it is a non-metal, non-metal but it conducts electricity, and also it's brittle in nature brittle and also it has a lubricant property. It has lubricant property. Property. Now when you draw right, you can draw right smoothly. Although you sharpen the pencil, it happens like that. And also graphite is used as a lubricant in machinery. So that means their uses are related to the properties. So here you can say it is used in pencils to write, then batteries or dry cells to conduct electricity and as a lubricant. Lubricant you all know when there are machines when the parts are moving one on top of the other if it is rough you might hear the screeching sound it be, might become hot that is due to friction. If you put a lubricant like an oil or graphite carbon, that smoothens the two surfaces. Because of that, it reduces that friction. You don't hear the noise. Even your bicycle, you might have oiled it. Any other machine at home, you might have seen your parents or elders or putting oil to that. Similar to that, you can use carbon as a lubricant. So these are some properties 
related to their state. They are solid. Here another thing, graphite is a solid as well. So this is a solid. Solid that is also useful. That is why it can be used as a uh, in dry cell, uh, in pencils, all that because it is a solid. So like that, you can relate all their characteristics to their users as well as their physical state with their user. If I quickly go back and check this, you can see here copper, it is ductile, therefore it can be made into wires, it's a solid metal, it has electric conductivity. So therefore it is used as electricity cables and wires. There are many more uses, I'm just giving you a few examples. Then we have iron, ductile, malleable, thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, sonorous nature. Because of that it is used to make cooking utensils, cables, large structures like ships, bridges, cables I have already written before also. You can even include bells. Now cables, bells, all these are different uses. There are so many more uses of iron. You can think of many more. Then we have mercury. Mercury is a liquid metal. It has thermal conductivity and it expands due to heat. Because of that it is used in thermometers. And then we have carbon. Carbon graphite is a solid, non-metal, conducts electricity, brittle, lub lub lubricant property. So because of that it is used in pencils to write batteries, dry cells to conduct electricity and as a lubricating agent or lubricant. Like this again for graphite also carbon you can come up with many more examples where we use them in day to day activity, in daily activity. So it either depends on their properties, density, melting point, boiling point, then ductility, malleability, sonorous nature, lustre, thermal conductivity, electric conductivity and brittleness. In addition to that, there are three physical states, solids, liquids and gases. So you should be able to relate the elements with their uses and their properties. I am sure students, you all can understand that clearly. So with that, I will move on to the next slide. So then we have an assignment here. Explore information relating to the instances where the properties of matter are exploited in real life and present the information in a creative manner. So in the previous slide also students, I explain four different examples how carbon is used, how iron is used, mercury is used. So like that, we can think of many more substances. It's not only the non-metals and metals, but any substance. Now, if you take glucose, we take that for energy. Salt is used in cooking, flavoring food. So like that, you can think of many substances. It's basically matter. So here explore information relating to the instances where the properties of matter are exploited in real life and present the information in a creative manner. So as an example, like I told you all before, we used copper, then carbon, then I told you all about hydrogen with the table, hydrogen balloons. So these are all elements. So these are all elements. Elements can be used in daily life. Similar to that, you can use glucose, you can use table salt, then there is water that we use, the normal water, pure water and the normal water, drinking water, bottle water, that is also matter. So like this, you can think of many different matter they are physical state, whether they are solids, liquids or gases. So these are some elements and compounds. All of them come under matter. Then you can consider their physical state. Physical state. So that is again solid, liquid and gases. 
you can combine everything and relate them to their users in daily life and to make it creative i'm sure you all are very creative you can make it in the form of a booklet you can make it in the form of a chart or else if you are using it you can even make it as a presentation with lot of pictures lot of information you can describe them in any way you want or you can even make it as a concept map either way you can make it in an attractive manner so that is up to you all i have given you all some examples your family with so many more examples use that and use your creativity to make a and present the information related to uses of matter in relation to their properties in daily life i'm sure you all will be able to do that in a very good way with that students i'm going to move on to the next slide so here again there is another table that is given in your textbook the first column has physical properties of matter second one instances of application again this can also be used for your uh, presentation the assignment that was there in the previous slide and the last column gives you the substance so if we discuss all these now the first one is metallic luster metallic luster so it is in metals and that is used to make jewelry making jewelry normally we prefer jewelry why because they are shiny they don't tarnish e easily so they give a nice look to make a person look more beautiful more pretty so they are the reason why these substances like gold and silver here you can see gold and silver they are metals they are solids and mainly they have the metallic luster and that is why we can use them to make jewelry is that clear student then we have the second one hardness what is hardness even if there is lot of pressure force applied the substance is able to withstand wear and tear that is the hardness so they can withstand weight i told you all about cables the lift the escalator lift with lot of people it has to go up and down they are usually operated using cables even to lift vehicles the cranes very large containers very heavy containers are lifted using cranes in all those they use cables metallic cables steel cables steel rails the railway tracks the rails they are made up of steel all these are possible because of their hardness they can withstand lot of force they can withstand wear and tear and they can lift a heavy weight they can hold a heavy weight so withstanding weight steel rails the railway tracks even cables then cutting glass that is another substance diamonds as stylets now that's very important diamonds are a form of carbon they are one of the most strongest substances on earth the naturally existing elements that are very very strong now you all know glass you can't just cut with a knife or a blade it is not possible if you try to hammer it and break it it will just it's brittle it will just break into pieces so if you want to cut glass into a certain size or a certain shape you need to use diamond stylets that is possible because diamond has a very high hardness very very hard very very strong substance so that is why hardness of diamond is used to cut glasses cutting glasses then the third one compressibility what is compressibility by applying a force you can reduce the volume of a substance and make it compressed that is possible with gases solids are not compressible at all liquids are difficult to compress or you cannot again compress them easily but gases are compressible so that is why we are able to fill gases into cylinder so here compressibility storing gases in cylinders 
oxygen cylinders for patients, people who are deep sea divers, mountain climbers, in hospitals, like I said, patients for all of us or all of those people, they need oxygen cylinders. Similar to that, LP gas, liquid petroleum gas. What is that used for? Household, for cooking, we use LP gas. In cylinders, you would have seen. So inside the cylinder, these gases are compressed. So that means there is a large volume of gas compressed into that particular cylinder. So that is why you are able to use it for a long time. So that is compressibility. Then order. The smell that spreads. Detecting gas leakages. Again LP gas. When you connect the LP gas cylinder to the cooker and you start the cooker, if you get the smell of LP gas somewhere else, that means there is a leakage. Or in the lab, to use Bunsen burners, we connect the LP gas. So there, if you get the smell, the odor, if that spreads, you know there is a leakage. So to detect gas leakage, there is the property order. For example, is LP gas. That is one application. There is another application. We use perfumes, Dio sprays, air fresheners. All these are possible because the spreading of the scent. It, you can have different fragrances, flowers, so many things. Perfumes, sweet smelling, smoke. So even air fresheners and all those come under that. They can be fragrances of flowers, fruits, all that is possible because of the physical property order. Then we have the next one, thermal conductivity. Again, substance or matter that can conduct heat. So it is used in cooking pans. Aluminium is one. You all are familiar with steel. That is also another one. You can include that as well. Aluminium, even steel, stainless steel, all those can be used to make cooking pans. Then soldering. What is soldering? Now soldering, I'm sure you are familiar with that. When they have electric circuits, if they want to fuse two parts of the circuit, they use lead, metal lead. They have something called the bout, the soldering gun, and that conducts heat. It gets heated to a high temperature. When you hold it to a piece of lead, a strip of lead metal or a, like a wire of metal, that melts. And when that melts and falls onto that connection, the two ends or two parts get soldered together. So that is the process of soldering. That is possible because of thermal conductivity. The instrument used to solder, it can conduct heat well. So soldering. Then we have the sixth one, electrical conductivity. Conducting electricity, we have discussed that before also. Copper, aluminium, cables. I am sure you all know that very well. Then we have the seventh one, elasticity. Elasticity, you can stretch it. When you apply a force, it gets stretched. And when the force is released, it gets back to its normal state, normal shape. So that is elasticity. For decoration, how do we use that? Rubber balloons, rubber is elastic in nature. When you blow air into it, the balloon gets inflated. And the balloons are available in so many different shapes and colors. So that you use it for decoration. Similar to that, you can think of the rubber band. Because it is elastic, you can take a large pile of papers and you can put a rubber band. Or uh, many pencils together, you put a rubber band around it. So that is possible because of the elasticity. Similar to that, even the elastic that you use for dresses, clothes, you can think of that as well. So elasticity. Then we have the next one, expansivity. I told you all this before also. In thermometers, when heat is provided, the liquid mercury expands. That is what we say as expansivity. Volume increases due to heat. So that is one example measuring temperature. 
you have mercury thermometers, mercury and also you have alcohol thermometers. Both of them, the volume of the liquid increases when there is heat provided. So when you have fever, because of your fever, there is more heat conducted through mercury and it expands and because of that you are able to read the temperature. Same thing goes for alcohol thermometers. We use both of them in the lab as well. So that is the property of expansivity. There is one more use there, instance, automatic electrostats. When we say electrostats, you have these electrical appliances at home. Say iron, rice cooker, electric kettle, they are when the temperature increases. Now when you are ironing clothes, when the temperature, the iron gets overheated, automatically light goes off. You can feel the temperature decreasing. Again after some time, it starts again and you can feel the heat increasing. Then a rice cooker, a electric kettle, after the water boils or the rice is cooked, they stop automatically. So in all those, there is this automatic electrostat. There are again, those are metals that can expand. Because of that, they are used as electrostats and they are used to control the temperature. Electrical appliances with a bimetallic strip. When we say bimetallic strip, that is two metals connected together. The metals have different expansivity. Because of that, they are used as automatic electrostats. Again, you will learn this function in your higher grades. So I'm not going to go into higher de more detail. When we say bimetallic strips, two metals fuse together to form one strip. That is a bimetallic strip. Then we have the next one. That is the ninth one, brittleness. Brittleness, when you drop a glass on the floor, it cracks, breaks into pieces easily. Pencil lead breaks into pieces easily. Sulfur can be crushed into powder very easily. Eggshells can be broken into tiny pieces very easily. So all these show the brittleness, brittle nature of that particular matter. Breaking larger pieces into smaller pieces or crushing it into powder. Chemical compounds like sulfur, copper sulfate, glucose, even sugar, salt. They are also chemicals but used in your household. So those are chemical compounds. Then cereals. Now say you eat certain corn cereals, rice cereals. Those are available as tiny pieces. They are not a large thing but they are tiny pieces easy to consume so cereals then granite granite stone if you have a large granite rock if you want to use it for different purposes say a granite tile or something you need to break it into tinier pieces so it should have the brittleness in it so that it can be broken then eggshells eggshells are used for uh, gardening to provide minerals to the plant. So for that you can't just put the eggshell as a whole, you have to crush it and put it. Even to fry the egg, if you are not able to crack the shell, you can't fry an egg, so you have to crack it. It is possible only because it is brittle. So when cooking egg, when you are frying egg, you crack the shell, you just knock the egg with a spoon or a knife or something, the shell cracks. So that is possible because of the brittleness. Then we have the next one, texture. Smooth, powder is smooth. Some of the materials are very, very smooth. So that is texture smooth. Applying talcum powder. You apply to your face, your body, for babies they use. Even when playing carom, they put talc powder, talcum powder on the carom board so that the discs will move easily. So that's because of the smooth texture. So talc is a mineral that is used to make talcum powder. So this has the smooth nature. You have to remember that. Talc is a mineral that is used to make talcum powder, which is very smooth. Then the last property. Again, texture that is rough. 
rough texture is needed in certain instances. Smoothening the surface of wood and walls. What do we use? To smoothen the table surface, chairs, they use sandpaper. Or make it into fine things before painting the walls, they smoothen the wall using sandpaper. So sandpaper is very rough. And you all know there are different numbers based on the roughness of the sandpaper. Some are very slightly rough, some are very, very rough. So that again is used to smoothen the surface of wood and walls, etc. So from these tables, students, now you all can see there are so many different physical properties. Ten properties under texture we have smooth and rough. And here there are many instances where those properties are applied. And there are the substances that have those properties and are being used in our daily life. This is not it. There are so many more. You can think of many more substances. There are physical properties where they are used. Then you all have a very good knowledge about lot of matter. There are physical properties and there are uses. So using all these also you can make that assignment where you were asked to make a colorful, creative presentation of all these information. So in addition to this also, you can get more information from books, journals, newspaper, even from the internet. So I'm sure you all can do that and I'm sure you can understand all these clearly. So with that students, I will move on to the next slide. A schematic diagram such as one given below can be constructed. So this is like a summary of what we have already learned. We talked about matter. Matter is something that has a mass and occupies space. And under matter we had pure substances and mixtures or non-pure substances. So here you can see pure substances, non-pure substances. Then pure substances were divided as elements and compounds and again elements were divided as metals and non-metals. And on the other side we have mixtures. So as examples you can write so many. You can say gold. So as metals you can take gold, calcium. Like this you can think of many metals. Then under non-metals you can think of hydrogen. Then there is carbon, so many non-metals that we discussed. Under compounds, we can consider water, that is pure water. Then there is salt, sodium chloride. Then there is glucose, that is also a compound. So many compounds are there in daily life, in our environment. Then non-pure substances, you can think of air. Air is a mixture of many gases. I told you all nitrogen, oxygen, then there is carbon dioxide, water vapor. So it is a mixture of many gases. Then there is seawater. Seawater you know is very much different from pure water. Why? Seawater is salty because there are so many salts dissolved in seawater. We also use that to check the densities. You were able to see pure water has a fixed density whereas other water other specimens of water like lake water, pond water, river water, sea water, their densities are different because they are not pure substances, they are mixtures or non-pure substances. So you can classify them and you can write many examples here. This is all what we have discussed in the lesson so far. So with that students, I will move on to the next slide. Here we have the summary of the slide. So that means I have come to the end of this lesson and I'm going to discuss the summary with you. The first one, the things that have a mass and that occupy space are known as matter. So matter, things that have a mass and occupy space are matter. The making of matter from particles and the existence of spaces among them is referred to as discontinuous nature of matter or in other words you can call it as particulate nature of matter. All three states solid, liquid and gas are discontinuous. Three states solid, liquids and gas are discontinuous. 
the reason for the specific features of matter in solid, liquid and gaseous state is the diversity of the arrangement of particles in them. We have discussed in this in detail. Solids, the particles are very closely arranged. In liquids, they are slightly far apart with less interaction. They are free to move. Whereas in gaseous state, the particles are randomly arranged. They are always involved in random movement. So, different states based on arrangement of particles. The different properties of solids, liquids and gases make them applicable for different purposes. That also we have discussed before. Solids are used for different purposes, liquids for different purposes, gases for other purposes. So, based on their physical state. Based on composition, matter can be classified as pure substances and non-pure substances. What we just saw in the previous slide. Pure substances can be classified into two categories. Again, elements and compounds. Pure substances with definite properties and indivisible by physical or chemical methods into substances with different properties are called elements. So, elements are pure substances. They have definite properties. They are indivisible by physical or chemical methods into substances with different properties. So, if it is carbon, can, carbon cannot be divided into other particles that have a special physical or chemical property. So, that is carbon element. Same way sodium element, copper element. So, those are all elements. I will move on to the next slide where I continue the summary with you all. The pure substances formed by the chemical combination of two or more elements in a constant ratio are known as compounds. So, here those are the compounds. You have pure substances combined in a fixed ratio that is a chemical combination to form a compound. Water is made from oxygen and hydrogen, carbon dioxide, carbon and oxygen. Like that different elements combine in a fixed ratio to form the compound. Then sonority, thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, malleability, ductility, density, melting point, boiling point, hardness, elasticity, expansivity, luster, etc. are physical properties of matter. I am sure you can recall all what we discussed. You all know all these properties now. In pure substances, the physical properties such as density, boiling point and melting point have a constant value. That is very important. In pure substances, the density, boiling point, density, boiling point and melting point have a constant value. Using those values, you can identify what type of substance that is. Then based on the physical properties, elements can be classified as metals and non-metals. And various physical properties of substances are used for daily activities in life. That is what we discuss towards the end of the lesson. So this is the summary students. I am sure from all the discussions, all the activities I did in the lab, now you all have a very good understanding about this lesson. So with that, I am going to end this chapter and in the next chapter, I will discuss the questions given in your exercise book.